fantastic, fantastic to be out of that place and back here. Yeah. Michael Bagram told us uh, when he spoke to you uh, in the week leading up to you flying home that you were really looking forward to a walk on the Sea Point Promenade. Have you managed to have that? Not yet. No. 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 Are you saving that? Are you? <laughs> too too many interviews from the press and so on, taking up my time. Um, we all saw you walking into to Cape Town International Airport. I think the relief and the joy on your face uh, was was palpable. How did it feel boarding that plane in Dubai? Well, I was uncertain whether I would be allowed to board it. So, you know, we had problems getting the visa and, uh, you know, up to the last minute, I wasn't sure if they would actually let me go. But they did. And eventually, when I did get onto the plane, it felt fantastic. I mean, it was really, you know, once they started the engines, then I knew I was on the way. So you'd allowed yourself but, a bit of a, a, a sigh of relief as that plane yeah, took off? Yeah, sure. Uh, but the, the, the embassy people took me to the airport. They drove me to Dubai, which is about an hour and a half from Abu Dhabi, and they waited until they were sure that I was actually being allowed onto the plane, which was very good of them. You know, this was around about um, 2, 3 in the morning. Casting your mind back to last August, you are on your way home from the UK, you're transiting through Dubai, the next thing you know you're being arrested. What yeah. went through your mind? Well, you're totally shocked. I mean, one didn't know what it was all about, although the chappie at the airport told me that I was a murderer. And uh, I wasn't really sure what he was talking about in the beginning. And then, you know, gradually the next day or two, the, the reason for the arrest uh, became known. And, uh, you know, I'm not very impressed with Emirates Airline, who knew that there was a problem with my visa. And uh, in Toronto, when we left, uh, told us that uh, no, when I checked that the problem had been solved, there was no, nothing to worry about. And as soon as I get to Dubai, I was arrested. So thank you, Emirates Airlines. How were you treated by officials? Um, you know, not particularly badly. I mean, it was, you know, the whole thing was just very, very boring. I mean, they got me into Dubai airport jail, and then I moved to another jail, and then eventually ended up at the central prison uh, called al Wathpa, where I spent the next two months. Um, not, you know, it was just boring, that's all it wasn't. Food was reasonable, company wasn't too bad, and um, yeah, there was just very little to do. People had brought me books and so on, and one of my uh, fellow uh, inmates was a chess player, so uh, he had sort of organized himself a chess set, so we played a few games there. What do you remember about the case of the young girl in question? And I would appreciate doctor-patient confidentiality, but what can you tell us about the case? I mean, you must have been having to wreck your brain when they arrested you last August, wondering mm. what on earth, what, what case they were going on about. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I remember the child, obviously. Uh, she had acute myeloid leukemia, which is a pretty bad one to have. And um, she had started on chemotherapy before I got the, started my locum and I just continued the, the treatment and unfortunately uh, she died as probably 80% of them uh, normally do, uh, especially at that time. And um, <coughs> there wasn't anything particular, I mean I didn't know there was any going to be any fuss about it and uh, I left um, about uh, uh, two weeks after she died uh, at the end of my contract there and uh, knew nothing about the whole affair until until I got back to Dubai uh, 10 years later. You must have been incredibly thankful for all the support you received from medical associations the world over, including the Islamic Medical Association. Yes, no, no, sure. I mean, I've been very thankful for, you know, my, the family also, you know, did a hell of a lot of work. And um, uh, Michael Bagram, the lawyer, and <coughs> uh, also um, support from all over the world. The only problem is that I, you know, I don't want to denigrate uh, the amount of support I had, but I doubt very much if any of it had any effect on the Emirati establishment and legal system, because they don't just take any, they take no notice of this, they don't publish anything in their newspapers, there was never any editorial comment about my incarceration. Uh, it was just a report of the case, uh, what had happened. Uh, in the 17 times that I appeared there. Why were you working in the UAE? Uh, well, it's pretty obvious. I think any medic in this country would know that. Uh, I spent 33 years at the Red Cross Children's Hospital. 
uh, I started the Children's Cancer Unit there. And um, after retiring, uh, I've now increased my pension by probably three or four percent per year. And currently, I'm earning, coming away with 15,000 rands a month, which was probably a little more than I had when I started. And obviously, you cannot live on what your pension pays you. So uh, many practitioners leave this country to go and work overseas. Would you discourage other doctors now from working in the UAE? Um, not discourage. I mean, obviously, you've got to be careful if you do get into trouble, you know. Uh, well, I didn't know I was in trouble, but if you do, it's probably a good idea to leave the country immediately. I was told by uh, somebody working for MediClinic who, who operate hospitals in the, in the UAE that if any of their doctors gets into trouble, any of their uh, foreign doctors, they get them out of the country immediately. Um, However, you know, you go there because you, they don't pay you enough in this country. Why do you think it took nine months for you to get on a plane home? Uh, well, I think there are two things. Number one, I think the management, put it that way in general, is, of the country is incredibly inefficient. And uh, they do things very, very slowly. Um, and. You know, for example, the judge appointed the, a medical committee to investigate the case on the 11th of October to report within 30 days. Five months later, they had not reported and nothing was done. Everybody just shrugs their shoulders and just leave it at that. When I suggested to my lawyer, a local lawyer, why don't you communicate with the newspapers and complain about it, he said, we don't do that sort of thing in this country. I mean, any other lawyer in any other country would have, would have shouted to the Sunday papers about the delays. But, the, you know, they just accept it. Um, so there's nothing much you can, you can do about it. There have been some whispers in the past couple of months that you might have been considering, once you had the safety of being home, to take some further action against the UAE for the, for the delays this has mm. taken and, mm. and for the amount of effort that's been required on your part to clear your name. Yeah. Is that still the case or do you want to put this whole sorry saga behind you? Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know that there is any uh, action I could take against them. I don't, I'm not sure whether they, they do, uh, whether there's anything that they would feel responsible for. I, I would doubt that. But Obviously, I'm looking into that, and uh, I've wasted nine months of my life. I haven't been able to work, and um, I think they do owe me, but uh, whether they're going to or not is another question. Lastly, Professor, I must ask you, the, the, the case was incredibly frustrating. You know, the court date would come, uh, you would appear, you would sometimes not appear because the court documents weren't ready. How did you cope with all those delays? How did you keep yourself going for nine months? Well, I think I'm a, a reasonably stable guy. I mean, maybe a little bit, you know, too stable sometimes. But, uh, you know, I did a lot of reading. Um, you read the newspapers, the local papers in the morning, and a lot of my, my, the chap I was staying with had a lot of books. I, I read a, a lot, went for the odd walk and so on. I'd like to just also thank Dr. Elwyn Buchel, who accommodated me when... Um, when I left jail, um, he came to visit me but through a mutual contact uh, from South Africa who knew us both and uh, offered me accommodation when I left uh, jail. And I, as I said, I don't think he uh, realized that I was going to be with him for the next seven months, but that's what happened. And uh, I want to thank him very much for uh, keeping me there all that time. Um, and yeah. You just got to keep going, that's all. Well, thank you very much indeed for coming in this afternoon and enjoy being home. Thanks very much. News that moves. ENCA.com.